So here's the summary. Kyrie Irving, basketball player, has been trending for the past week. Why? Because he shared a link to a documentary that's currently listed on an Amazon website. The documentary entitled Hebrews to Negroes Wake Up Black America is a documentary that talks about the lineage of black people with Israeli Semitic ancestry. Posting the link to a film currently being sold for $40 on Amazon website was not a good move for Kyrie apparently. I already talked about his altercation with ESPN analyst Nick Friedel in my last video where he was getting badgered for his beliefs. But what I didn't tell you guys was that after that altercation, he took, he took down his post where he shared the link. He put up another post on Instagram saying that he loves all people. He was not trying to hurt anybody, yada, yada, yada. He then gave $500,000 of his hard-earned basketball money to the Anti-Defamation League to atone for his sin of posting a link. Whew. Everything is resolved. We can get back to talking about basketball, right? Wrong. The very next day, the media was asking him again if he was anti-Semitic. What? Did they even read his last post? What about the 500 grand he paid out? That's a lot of money to pay out just for a link. Kyrie's answer to that question was, I can't be anti-Semitic if I am Semitic. And that was that. Apparently that statement, in addition to the apology he made on Instagram and the 500,000 donation he made to atone for his sin was the last straw. He was banned from the Brooklyn Nets for anti-Semitism. And not too long after that, Nike cut ties uh, with him on his shoe deal. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I thought that was very excessive. But since none of the guys on ESPN will say anything, I have to. So what I'm saying is, it's incredibly unfair to take away a man's livelihood just because he posted a link to a video that you disagree with. Whatever happened to ignoring the link? It's also incredibly unfair to take a man's $500,000 and then fire him after taking the money. Am I being unreasonable here? But just to make sure I covered all bases, I decided to watch the documentary Hebrew to Negroes documentary. I'm willing to bet that most people that are commenting never watched the video. I mean, when I had made my first video, I hadn't watched it either. So here are my thoughts. It's a three hour plus documentary that was presented in my opinion in a kind of amateurish style. This is the kind of documentary you see on YouTube all the time. If you were looking for one of those Fahrenheit 9-11 quality of documentary, this is not it. Honestly, if the media did not make such a big stink about this film, I don't think I would have made it past the first 10 minutes. Because it's, it's, it's just not my thing. I've seen documentaries like this on YouTube before, where some people were saying that the blacks created the pyramids in Egypt, and everybody was arguing in the comments about it. No big deal. I've seen documentaries where people were saying that the elliptical buildings in Zimbabwe were not done by the Shona people, they were done by the Europeans. And everybody was arguing about it in the comments. I've also seen a documentary where they were talking about the churches of Lalibela and how people were saying that they were not created by the Ethiopians. And everybody was arguing about it in the comments. What I'm trying to say here is, the documentary felt like one of those documentaries that really would have not caught much attention except for the fact that the media wanted to destroy Kyrie Irving. And in my opinion, it was because of his vaccine stance. I could be wrong, but that's just what I think. People like Kyrie and Djokovic are being scapegoated. Now, I watched the whole documentary, and most of it, I mean 99% in my opinion, was not controversial at all. It was just focused on trying to prove that black people were the Israelites that were talked about in the Bible. It's not controversial. It could be wrong, but wrong and controversial are not the same thing. The main theme of this movie is, he talked about how when the Israelites from the Bible were enslaved and banned from Jerusalem, they were exiled all over the world. Some were sent to Africa, some were enslaved and brought to America, some were in Asia and some were in South America. 
And he said that the current people that are in Israel right now are not the original Israelites from the Bible, but instead Europeans who converted. Now, I don't know history, and I don't know if this is true or not, but oh my goodness, is this the documentary you're going to ruin a man's life over? Other statements they made in the documentary that could be seen as controversial or not is that the slaves that came to America, they came to America in ships that were owned by Jews and landed in ports that were owned by Jews. Once again, I have no idea if this is true, but like the other documentaries that I mentioned before, why can't this all be just argued away in the chat? Why does it have to be considered anti-Semitic? Right now, there's a whole movement in Hollywood about the Dahomey tribe in Africa and how they were brutal slave traders. One of the most brutal regimes that killed people and destroyed people. This is going on right now on the internet uh, over this movie, The Woman King. I talked about it. And I actually disagree with all the statements being made. But nobody cares about my opinion. If I see folks talking about it and I disagree with them, I just move on. Every day I have to listen to comments from mainstream media and even internet shows like from people like Ben Shapiro where they're saying things like all the crime, 90% of the crime is being done by blacks. I find that offensive. I can't cancel anybody. You know what I do? I just ignore them. That's their opinion. Or I can argue about it in the chat. So to summarize... I think 99% of this documentary is not controversial. It could be wrong, and that is subject to your opinions, but definitely not controversial. The documentary is about a guy saying that the people who were Israelites from the Bible were black. And the whole documentary goes over how they left Israel and they were exiled all over the world, to Asia, to Africa, to the Americas, right? and how they need to find themselves and make it back home. That's what it is. And the 1% of controversial statements that you're hearing in the news are statements made about the current inhabitants of Israel and, they, and how they are not the original Israelis from the Bible. That's what all those controversial statements are about, right? That this group is the original Israelis and this group is not. So that is the controversial statement. Now, I would make the argument that Kyrie, along with everybody else you see uh, on YouTube, where you know people are on Ancestry.com looking for their ancestry, you, know, you see people all the time, oh, look, I'm half Italian, I'm half Ghanaian, I'm half this. People are excited about their ancestry. Kyrie was looking up his ancestry, and he was sharing the link because of the 99% part. Hey, this thing is saying, I'm a Hebrew. I'm excited. Let me share it with people. I don't know Kyrie's mind, I don't know what he thinks, but I know it's possible to love a movie even if there's some parts in the movie that you don't agree with. I mean, I love Game of Thrones, but I think season eight was shit. I would still recommend it. Like, you can recommend a movie and not love every part of that movie. You might love most of it. And really what I believe, my opinion, Kyrie loved most about that documentary is that it was telling him about his ancestry, what he believed to be his ancestry, whether he was right or wrong. But I'll end it with this. Kyrie is losing everything right now, but there's two people that are absolutely winning. And that would be the owner of Amazon and the director of the documentary, Hebrews to Negroes, Wake Up Black America.